translation and training business exists almost exclusively online. She receives and shares translation projects online, her address book is online, and she is active on several social media platforms. Because of this, she has had to learn to protect her online information. She is also passionate about sharing what she has learned and teaching others. Today, she wants to share some tips on how you can protect your privacy and information online. This speech is project number eight from the Competent Communicator Manual, Get Comfortable with Visual Aids. Her objective is to get comfortable using the projector uh, and use it correctly. The speech time is five to seven minutes. Please welcome Tess. app 
and I download it and use it because the program is there. Or if I go on vacation, there's a uh, download the metro map or, or currency exchanging or something like that. Or perhaps you have some old version of Candy Crush on your, your phone that you're not using anymore. Another good tip is to delete the apps you don't use because they're just another hole for people to access your information. So if you don't use the app, delete it. The other thing important to protect is the information on it. And the best way to do this is, well, first of all, using your fingerprint lock on everything you can. That's the safest password or lock you have. The other thing is to protect everything with passwords. And I know we get, we are asked to provide a password for everything these days. And if you're like me, I have a hard time remembering even two or three passwords. And most of the time, they're just way too easy and easy to crack if you really want to access my information. So an easy solution for this is to use a password application that stores the passwords for you. For, for example, on my iPad or on my computer, I use LastPass. I, it asks me, do you want to, when I create a new password, it asks me, do you want to save this password? And then it remembers it for me. And it can also create very difficult passwords for me, and I have to use that generated password every time. And this password is the, is the harder thing, hardest thing to crack. And all, the only thing I need to remember is the password for LastPass, the main password. And these, then I wanted to talk to you about two things that I think are very nifty and convenient. For example, the geotagging. If you post a picture somewhere, it asks if you want to tag it with the place you're at. And it's, it's nice to let people know where you're at and it shows better. Um, but the geotagging is a way for people to start tracking your whereabouts and your habits to see what you're doing. And it's also, uh, a lot of burglars use this information to see when you're not at home or when people are not at home. So don't tag it with a place. And the other one is you get the option of signing in with your Facebook account or Google Plus account or something when you go to a new website or use a new social media or something. And this is just very convenient, but it's an extra risk. You're putting the hackers, making it easier for hackers to hack into two accounts with just one password instead. The last thing I wanted to talk to you about is two-factor authentication, which is an extra layer of security if you're asked to log in somewhere and you provide a username and password, two-factor authentication asks you for another step to send a code to your email or your phone that you enter, which is an extra layer of protection for you. Gmail uses this. A lot of social media use this these days. You're probably familiar with it with banking information. This is an, a great extra easy security function. So after hearing these things, I want you to think about, are you protected? Is there anything else you can do to protect yourself and your information online? If you want to know more about this, you can go to stopthinkconnect.org. Thank you.